What's up, guys? I'm gonna pick up the little box that I use as a tripod stand thingy majigger. Like, I don't know what to call it, but <laughs> I like to use these boxes from the moon box, which I wish I could afford. I wish I could afford the moon box because I miss getting things like that in the mail. <sighs> Maybe in another month. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to pull the deck out. Maybe not. I already have so many decks in my bag, you guys. I like to switch it out, but maybe it won't. Maybe not, maybe not. Yeah. I mean, better not. Although I want to work with the Guardian Angel Tarot more. Good old Doreen Virtue. <laughs> okay, um, so let me let me carry these boxes back into the, the living room. Come on, Starla. She follows me into the tarot room because she likes to sleep under the desk when I'm doing readings. So every time I go in there, I think she thinks that I'm going to do readings. All right. So now that I have a... Now that I have a stand, um, so you guys came to my aid because I put a call out. Whoa, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Um, I put a call out on my Instagram for video ideas because I'm literally like running on empty when it comes to video ideas. Sorry, guys. Um, and so I put a call out <laughs> for you guys to give me some ideas. Um, and you guys sent a couple of them. So I'm going to snap photos of the ideas you guys put through and utilize those for the next couple videos because I have like absolutely no idea what to talk about in my videos. And I just feel like, I feel like I do a lot of the same kind of rambly rambly. I need to put lotion on my hands because my skin feels all rough. After I did the, the dishes, I don't know if you guys are like that, but I have a pet peeve. Oh, there's like cat toys all over the floor of my house, sorry. I'm like a cat mommy. Um, I have a pet peeve of dry skin. Like, I have dry skin. I have oily skin, but I also have dry skin with my eczema. So I'm like a, just a, I'm a fucking alligator. And um, <laughs> I tell my mom, like, you gave me lizard skin. And so I love having lotion on my hands because like I just can't stand having dry hands and then I can't stand having like dry elbow and it's just a big pet peeve of mine. Oh this stuff smells so good. Okay so I have the rest of my coffee. I finished breakfast before I did the before I'm doing this video um because I needed to pay my bills. It's Wednesday every other Wednesday is bill day <laughs> so I gotta as soon as the paycheck comes in like it, my, my paycheck came in today this morning as soon as it comes in I gotta like pay those bills because if I don't and then I'll look at it and I'm like oh I have so and so amount of money in my checking account and it's like no actually I probably only have less than half of that because I have to pay bills so so yeah okay um so <coughs> <laughs> two topics that I want to talk about because you guys gave the ideas. So you guys wanted to hear um, like an update on my tarot course and then also advertising the tarot course. So I'm going to get real with you guys. I was, um, I was really, really thankful and grateful that my tarot course sold out. Um, so when I, when I, when I put it up for, to, to take, um, to take openings, um, I had originally opened it for 10 spots and then I ended up filling it up to almost 20 people. Now, out of the 20 people, um, I would say maybe there was one of them that won my little giveaway for a, um, a giveaway for a, like a, a, a scholarship towards my course. So this person won all four courses for free. 
Um, and so that there was that person and then I had um, another person that I had, no, two, two of my friends are sitting in it just observing, just tell me like how I'm doing and like, um, you know, and then I also just told them if you want to do it, you could do it. If you don't, you don't. I don't know if they're doing the course or not, um, but I just had them there just to be like my eyes. <laughs> and then I had um, another friend that I just gave it to because um, they seem curious about it. And so there's like about, out of the 20 people, there's about four of them that are getting it for free. And then everybody else um, paid for their, for their spot in the course. And um, the first, the first class, like the first part, so my course is a four month course, okay? The first month, um, a lot of people were attending the live sessions. So I was doing two lives a week. Um, so a lot of people were attending the lives and I was getting a lot of interaction and everything. And then, um, the second month it kind of started to, some people kind of started to not be as present in the class. Um, I think I started to pull away from the lives halfway through my second month. I want to say it was like that. Um, and the reason was, was because I was rushing. There was certain some days where I was like rearranging the um, appointments that I had for my video readings, and um, there was times where I was just like, I was rearranging my day, my schedule, so that I could be present for the live session. And then when I would go on the live, I would have maybe like the same two or three students in the live out of. 15 people like I, I had 20 students in that course but the friends that I mentioned earlier minus except for the, the 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 girl that won the scholarship but like my friends that I just gave the course for free for them I don't I don't count them as my students so technically I have about 15 students so out of 15 students I was having like maybe three people in my life um, and it just got to the point where I was like I was getting tired of rearranging my day <laughs> and my schedule and feeling like I had a rush towards the end of the day just to make sure I can make it to a live to do a live and then only having like three people show up so I was really grateful and thankful to those three people but it just wasn't it just wasn't worthwhile for me to do the whole live thing um, so then I started filming like pre-recording the class sessions because I figured half of these students are like behind or I don't even know where they're at. Um, I had a couple students that I didn't even hear anything from from the very beginning of the course. So I don't even know if that person even did the first part of the course or there was just a lot of... <sighs> I wouldn't call it miscommunication because they have access to communicate with me through the Facebook group that the course was taking place in and through emails. So I feel like it's like if they were lost or if they were confused as to how to go about the course, they could email me. I'm, I'm, it's really easy to get a hold of me. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't call it a miscommunication. I would call it just that life happens. I think that that's what happened really for the majority of the students is that life happened people had stuff to do with their jobs people had plans i think one of my students went on vacation during the 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 course and then so when she came back from vacation she was playing catch up and you know so she was present and then um it, it's just i get it life happens like i had life happen too there was in july i had to cancel one week of the course because uh, i had to push it back because my sister came to visit and so she was staying here at the house and there was no way I could, you know, teach a tarot course with that. So, um, I, you know, life happens. It happens to me too. But <laughs> life seemed to be happening too much um, where I just was, it's it's like crickets in my course. And so by week, the by week, I keep saying week, but it's months. <laughs> so by the third month, um, which was we were going over the, the court cards, um, I really, to be honest, I really, I would say I had probably 1% interaction with that with that month. Um, I had like that one, there's like one or two students that I would say have been like pulling through the entire course. Um, but towards like that last two classes, I was putting the video out, I put a homework session out in the group and I didn't get any feedback. So it kind of sucks because um, I was really pumped and excited for my tarot course. 
And now, and it was my first, this is my first run doing it online. So of course it's like I have expectations and, and hopes. And I understand that it may not, um, it may not, you know, happen the way I envision it. I taught tarot classes in person and it's a whole different experience in person. You have students interacting with you, you're face to face with them, you know, it's, it's easier. But the online um, is really more of a go at your own pace kind of a course. And I think a lot of my students um, are are doing that. They're doing it at their own pace, which I, from the very beginning I mentioned, you know, go at your own pace, this kind of thing. But I didn't think that I wasn't going to get like zero interaction on my, on my stuff. And <laughs> when I like post, you know, I post the video in the Facebook group and then I'll put a prompt up so it's like for some of the courses for some of the classes I was like putting cards like um, like you know three card pools and I was asking the students to put their input in like interpreting the card pool or I was giving like a scenario you know and I was getting you know like it was like the same students that were interacting um, but it was it was less than like literally less than 50% of, of students that were interacting with this course so <laughs> I think just like any person, um, I started to doubt my ability to teach tarot. I started to really doubt my course. Like, was it worth it? Is it worth it? Um, I had a really mean um, troll <laughs> like about maybe a month ago, maybe even earlier, who was in my um, one of my tarot videos not in the course it wasn't in the course but it was somebody who p commented on one of my youtube videos pretty much putting me down and like tearing my ass apart about how my tarot course is mediocre and this and that and i understand it's a troll so like i really didn't take it all to heart oh my nose is running hang on one second guys. <laughs> My nose is running. It's the morning. You guys should know that routine by now. <laughs> like my mornings, I always have runny nose. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so when it comes to trolls and when it comes to people who are just trying to like tear you apart, I realize that that's a thing, you know? People just don't have anything better to do with their lives, I guess. So I didn't take what they said to heart, but it did, I will say it did piss me off. <laughs> because it was like obviously this person watches my stuff very closely based on the things that they were saying um this is somebody who is in my stories or watches my stories um this is somebody who watches my videos obviously because they commented on the video they're too chicken shit to be to come out so they're anonymous of course um and then they had very specific things to say about my course which I don't want to believe that it would be any of my students that would have done that, but it could have been a student that maybe talked to someone else on the side and maybe that person said something. I don't know. Um, but with my tarot course, I had, you know, I had one student that w was asking for a refund because um, they, they just didn't have the time to fulfill the rest of the course. So they were asking to be refunded for the, the, like, the last two classes. And I pretty much was really clear with them that they paid for all four months and they received the workbook for all four months. So you don't go to college and sign up for a semester and you pay for you know this and this and they, they give you the materials, they give you the works and the workbooks or whatever the fuck. You don't ask for refunds on shit that you already get. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like I could have been nice and said, okay, fine, I'll refund you half the money. But this person already received my workbook that I put my heart and soul into and I worked on. So <laughs> to me, it's like, that's like giving it away for free, you know? And so to me, I'm like, no, I had to stand my ground with that. And I was really like, I was really, um, I was taken aback by it because it was like, I had to really think twice about what I was gonna do. And so I asked one of my friends for advice because my friend was the one that was giving me, 
giving me advice from the get-go. Like it was her idea for me to put together a giveaway for um, a scholarship to get through my entire four-month course for free. And so um, I, I just, I came at her with what happened. <laughs> I came at my friend with what happened. I was like, hey, I need your advice. Like, this is my feelings on it, but of course you're outside person. So I need, I want you to tell me like, what would you do if you were in my situation? And my friend went to, she's going, she goes to college. She went to college, she graduated university and all of that. So she knows what that's like, you know? And so I asked her, what would you do? And she pretty much, pretty much backed me up on my feelings. And she said, you, you worked hard on your workbook. You work hard on your videos and this and that. She's like, no, you know? And so um, I feel like this person was, I think they got upset. <laughs> I think they got upset by my, um, my decision to not refund their the, the money because you know they it's not like they can give me back my workbook like they have it in an email you know what I mean so I feel like I kind of maybe let them down or pissed them off or something because that person ended up unfollowing me and I feel like I think they blocked me on Facebook and, and they unfollowed me on Instagram and stuff so it was like and I'm still giving them the material for the last two months. So, <laughs> you know, she's on my email list and everything. And so at the end of every month for every course, I save all of those video replays. And what I do is I have a, a, a playlist on my YouTube channel that's unlisted. So only people who have the link can have that, that playlist. So at the end of every course, every month, I send the link to that playlist that has all of the class videos to all of the students that had signed up for that month even though even if they already got all the links throughout the week throughout the months throughout the month <laughs> they still get an email with the, the playlist so that they have it forever that's part of my course is that you have this these materials forever you know and so I'm still giving her the playlist link so it's not like she's not getting her money worth you know like but she chose to leave the facebook group she left the class the, the private facebook group and all of that and that's when i noticed okay she's not in here because i was like i you i could see how many members i have and so i was short one and so i went through my list and i was like i hope i didn't like kick out one of my members that didn't you know that i thought didn't pay for the next course and it, sure enough, it was the, the, the person that was asking for a refund. So they made the choice to leave the Facebook group. That's on them, you know. Um, but I'm still sending them the materials. So it's like, <laughs> I was just a little taken aback. And then it was like shortly after that's when I got the troll message. So I'm like, was it that person? Was it someone that person maybe said something to? I don't know. I, I don't want to assume or whatever. But it was just like, it was just too much of a coincidence. <laughs> So, um, so that's my tarot course right now. Like I'm, we're on the fourth month and, um, Monday I did. So I did the, the first video, um, Friday and I didn't want to throw at another video on like two days later on a Monday. So I'm going to wait till Friday to send the next week's video. So there's four videos for the month. And, um, this is the final month of the course and I'm just, kind of glad that it's over with to be honest with you guys because when I don't have any interaction um with the course and I don't have any feedback and I just feel like I feel like I'm putting out the work and nobody's showing up for it it's just a little it's a little discouraging and it kind of sucks um now, I don't want to just sound all doom gloom. Like there's been some really positives out of this experience. And one of those is that one of my students, um, she really like completely bloomed in her spiritual tarot business. Um, or I don't want to say tarot business yet, but I think she'll get to that point eventually. <laughs> but she really bloomed. Um, she so from the very first, from the very first class to like where we're at now I haven't heard from her in the last couple weeks but I I'm I, I figure it's life that's usually what it is for everybody um but she has created her own um Instagram devoted to tarot she's doing card pools she's putting these posts out she's starting to grow a little you know a following 
and she's blooming. And then I had another follower yesterday. Um, she brought her up and I, and I was like, oh, that's one of my students. And, and so this person was like, we talk and we're like getting really close and we're friends. And I just love the community because you may, I make friends with people online and it's like, I may never see these people, but they're amazing. And I'm like, yes. And so it was just so cool to see that one of my students was the person that, that this person was talking about. And it was like, yeah, they're doing amazing. They, they, they literally created their, their Instagram, um, like, um, maybe a couple months ago and they're just, they're doing it. So it, to see that was like, that kind of made me feel better about the situation with my tarot course. <laughs> um, but I will say I want to do another round of my tarot course, but I think instead of doing the live session classes, I think I've, I've learned my lesson. I think it's meant online courses are meant to be work at your own pace, have a pre-recorded video type of thing. So I want to clean up the videos that I have, or I may just go through and refilm most of them <laughs> um, and have just literally a course that people can go and buy. And once they, they purchase it, I just send them the material and I send them the videos and it's like you work at your own pace kind of a thing. I think that that's what's going to be the best unless I have a course that is super mini, like it's like a month tops. Because I think anything beyond a month, it's really hard to keep people's focus and it's really hard for people to stay present and attend the classes because life happens. But I do not believe that tarot can be taught in a month time frame. Absolutely not. I feel like it needs to be spread out. I feel like you need time to focus on di different areas. Um... So a course, a tarot course that lasts only a month, I, I just don't think that that's feasible. I think it's cramming a lot of information and a lot of stuff down people's throats. And it's like, it probably freaks them out too because that's a lot of information. So I don't know. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do, but I do know that this four month experience, I am glad it's almost over. Um, if I do plan on doing another round of my tarot course, it will definitely be a go at your own pace, pre-recorded video type of a course. Um, and I'm not going to have as much high expectation as I did before. I've learned my lesson and I feel like, <laughs> I feel like now that I've had a, a go at the online course type of thing, I would prefer teaching tarot in person than online. Um, because that student teacher interaction is really important and I think that I want to be asked questions you know I want my students to ask me questions if they don't get something or or whatever and if I'm not getting that it's like I feel like I'm just speaking to a void of emptiness and I'm like okay I guess everyone's good so we'll just keep moving on like I don't know so it's a little disappointing I'll say that I'm a little disappointed and you know, but it is what it is. <laughs> so we have three more classes left of the final part of the tarot course. And, um, and I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to post the videos. And if I don't get any interaction, then that's that it is what it is. You know, um, I do what I got to do at least as long as I'm, as long as I am putting out what I said I was going to do, then that's all that matters in my opinion. So yeah. So that's the tarot course. Um, the other question somebody asked, and we're 23 minutes in, so this might be a long video because I have time. Um, <laughs> so get yourself something to drink, you guys. Um, the other question that someone asked was to talk about spirituality becoming a trend. And oh my God, when I read that, I was like, yeah, it, I, can, I could see that. Um, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like spirituality has always been something that it's always been there, you know, you're not really aware of how great it is until you're involved, you're doing the spiritual thing. Um, but I think that spirituality does tend to become a, a trend or, you know, the acts of spiritual practices become a trend when people realize that they can make a large profit of money off of it. Um, I'm just, I'll just say it like that. <laughs> um... And, and I'm not saying like small businesses making a profit on off of it. I'm talking about like big 
companies making a profit off of it. Um, so when you start to see spiritual practices or, or tools for spiritual practices being sold in like big company places like Walmart or Amazon, well, Amazon, I'm whatever. I don't, I guess. Yeah. Amazon or, but like Walmart, you know, like when you walk into a store, like a, like fucking target. And if you see like stuff that you would normally see only at that one, um, mystical crystal shop, that's like 20 plus miles away that you only go visit once or twice a year because it's not close to where you live that <laughs> when you have easily access, easy access to these things, um, then you're going to get a whole plethora of people who are going to be, who are going to have eyes and have more eyes on it and then have more access to those things. So it's bound to happen. Um, and it reminds me of like, oh, my hair is all falling out. I brushed my hair and I have like all this loose hair. Ugh. Like when I have loose hair like that, it grosses me out. So let me throw this away. <laughs> okay. Um, it reminds me of back in the day when I was that little punk rock girl. I wasn't really punk rock. I was more of like an emo in high school. <laughs> and, um, I dated a guy in a band. And so I was all part of like the underground indie music scene. And I remember I used to get all upset when I would see, Random ass kids wearing band shirts of my favorite bands that I've known even before they became mainstream. I was that girl. <laughs> and so um, when I saw that question, I thought of the same scenario. I was like, you know, I do. I feel it. Like um, when you see just like average people who don't know anything about anything. <laughs> and now they're on the bandwagon of spirituality it does kind of make you feel like you want to, you know, like it, it makes you feel territorial. But the thing is, you guys, is that spirituality is open for anyone and everyone to jump on the bandwagon of. Um, I started my spiritual journey in 2012, which when I say it, I, I think it's so cliche because 2012, that was like looked at as the end of the world. Remember that? Um, but I feel like a lot of us had our awakenings in 2012 because I think I want to say 2012 was when we, we entered the age of Aquarius, but I could be wrong. <laughs> um, so a lot of people were having their spiritual awakenings in 2012 and, um, I don't know, was I part of that whole like main, like spirituality going mainstream. I don't know. Um, all I know was that I was jumping into this new path by myself and I didn't know I was learning off of people that I was following on YouTube. I was learning in my own personal journey. I was learning through the, the crystal shops that I was attending classes in. I was, tend I, I attended witchcraft, like witchcraft classes and stuff. Um, and then I was learning just on my own, like reading books and stuff. So I never really thought of myself as being part of the whole mainstream spirituality, but I, I guess I could be looked at as that for people who have already been on that path way longer before me. Um, so I guess it's, that's kind of like how it is. It's like, you'll always see these new people who are getting into it now, like people who are just getting into it now in 2019, you know, if you've been in, if you've been on the journey for a while, it's easy to look at those people as like, oh, you're not, you're not legit. Like you're just getting onto it because everyone else is. And you know, so <laughs> it's kind of, it's hard to say. Um, but I also feel like, um, it, you will know someone's authenticity versus someone who just doesn't know what the fuck they're doing, but they're just doing it because it's cool. You'll, you'll know that authentic, that you'll feel their authenticity. You'll feel it. Um, and to each their own, you know, so some people if they're just doing it because it's cool, they're going to get tired of it and they're going to move on to something else, you know, or they're going to go back to their Christian path later on or something. I don't know. <laughs> and so I'm probably going to get burned for that, but Hey, um, you know, and then people who take their path seriously or who have had this like fucking like life changing experience from their path. Um, 
they get real with it. Like it, it's real. Like your spiritual practice is not just a way for you to express your faith or whatever. It's, it's a lifestyle for some people. It's, it's a, um, it's a, I don't want to explain it. Like it's a saving grace for some people. Like for me, it saved me. <laughs> I was saved when I started spirituality. Um, <laughs> for me, my spiritual practice, um, it saved me. It really did. It, it took me away from the insanity that I was feeling because I was so caught between like what other people wanted me to do and what I wanted. Um, and my spiritual practice was born literally through my um, therapy sessions that I was attending and going through that whole like shedding my skin, you know, opening my heart to the truth. And my spirituality came out of it, you know. Some people's spiritual practices come out of walking into Walmart and then they see like a package of whatever and they're like, ooh, what is this? You know, ooh, this is so cool. <laughs> but just because someone steps into their spirituality from a more like, from a more like mainstream type of a way, sometimes they get real. Like sometimes it'll hit them for real and they're like, oh wow, this stuff is actually really speaking to my soul or I really feel like this is my calling or whatever. So I guess what I'm trying to say is we can't judge, you know, we can't judge people. We can't, we can't judge people and we can't get mad at people for being part of a spiritual practice only like two days ago and acting like they know it all versus those of us, those of us who've been doing it for, you know, six, seven years. And then those of us who've been doing it for like fucking 20, 30 years. I mean, there's people who have been doing this stuff forever when there was nothing on YouTube, there was nothing online. They were just literally, they probably had like those little covens, like, you know, like secret meeting places and like those little, like I said, like those hole in the wall crystal shops that are like 20, 30 miles away from where you live, but it's the only one within that radius. I mean, though, that's magical. That's magical. Um, I grew up where I grew up before I moved. Um, there was like four or five crystal shops within like a 20 mile radius. And so <laughs> I remember spending weekends, there'd be a weekend where I would like literally drive and go bum, bum, bum. Like I would go maybe like three or four of them in a day. Um, and it was just magical for me because it was like the feel of being inside the crystal shop and then you're talking to people and seeing the classes and sometimes I would sign up for a class or I would buy a deck that I didn't see online or whatever. It was just magical and it would it would be sweet because it was like, it would only be once or twice, you know, in a couple months that I would go to those shops. And and then I move up here <laughs> and there's only one shop up here and it's like, eh, it's not the greatest. It's like, it's real small. It's not really something that I would wanna go visit again because it was just small and overpriced. Um, and it sucks because now when I do wanna go to a crystal shop, I'm either going, I leave my house early before work and I'll go before work or I will have to take the drive and drive 50 miles to the, the next, the nearest crystal shop. So, so it's, it is, it's kind of like, it's, it's like that for me. Um, which is why I like to support a lot of online Etsy shops and stuff because I buy it and then I, it's just magical for me to receive a package in the mail up here in the desert and to get a lot of crystal stuff or like, you know, incense or a candle or a deck or whatever. So <laughs> I would I'd rather do that than like drive 50 miles to the shop, but I do miss that essence of the shop. But yeah, I, I guess like when you like, when you compare that to like, if I were to go to Walmart and find the stuff there, to me, it just feels like it would be fake and it would be like emptiness. Like it wouldn't have feeling to it. It wouldn't have a good energy to it if it was at Walmart versus driving 50 miles to the crystal shop. So I guess like, it's like if I had access to it at Walmart or driving 50 miles to the crystal shop, I'm being honest, I would drive 50 miles to the crystal shop because I just feel like that experience, there's a whole experience with that journey versus going to Walmart where it's like, they're probably, you know, buying things in bulk. It's probably like not ethically correct. 
Um, and then just like the energy of it just would feel dead to me. Like I buy my religious candles at Walmart because I get them like at Walmart, Dollar Tree or whatever, but I always cleanse them because you just, you, how many people are touching that stuff, you know? <laughs> so, um, but there's like certain things I'll buy at Walmart. Like, yeah, I'll get my, I'll buy my religious candles, you know, and that kind of stuff. But if I want like, can like a certain candle for like the full moon or if I'm looking for like incense or if I'm looking for a deck or crystals I will go to the crystal shops like those little mom and pop shops <laughs> so yeah and then like your spirituality doesn't have to just be about that it doesn't even have to be about the tools and all of that sometimes your spirituality is just you between you and your higher self you and God you and your spirit guides, you and your spiritual army. Um, and you don't need the tools, you know? Like the last couple nights I've been doing, because I meditate every night. I meditate or I'll listen to ASMR or both. <laughs> and the last couple nights I've been doing that, but I haven't been using a crystal or anything. And usually I have a Labradorite with me in bed. And I haven't been using anything. It's just literally just been me and my higher self. And I feel good, you know? Sometimes you don't need that. Sometimes you don't need the tools. Sometimes you, I don't even need a tarot deck. I could do a, an intuitive reading for somebody simply by feeling them, which is something I wanna get more into, but not, that's for another day. <laughs> um, but the tools are fun, you know? That's what makes it fun. Um, so I guess, I guess I just don't, I guess that that's my opinion is that, yeah, it sucks to go, to see things go mainstream that you really love. Um, it pisses me off if it's not like, I guess it's just, it pisses me off if people are doing things and they don't really understand why they're doing it. They're just doing it because it's cool. That stuff gets to me. Um, but to me, it's like, no matter where someone finds, they discover their spirituality, if they're, if they're authentic, you'll know. And if someone's not being authentic, chances are it's not going to last and they're going to move on to the next big thing. Um, and, you know, you'll still have your circle of your spiritual friends and stuff. And I think that's why it's important that we surround ourselves with people in our community that we know are authentic. You know what I mean? Like, you'll know. There's, <laughs> there's people in the tarot community who are super not authentic or at least don't carry a vibration that I would want to have any interaction with. There's people that just that are doing it just for the money. There's people that don't know what the fuck they're doing and they're still charging for it. Um, and then there's just people who are trolls and they're still doing like holding space for people, which I don't, I don't understand that. I'm, I, I encountered a lot of that on Tumblr, <laughs> not so much Instagram. Um, so, you know, there's, there's going to be fakes everywhere. There, that's just part of life, but, um, surround yourself with a strong, spiritual friend community you know a friendship circle like a, a little inner circle and those are your people you know what i mean and that's what i do i have my people that i like to talk to um in dms or some of them if i if i really get comfortable then you know i've even given my phone number away and we'll text but um or if i really get comfortable then we'll meet up in person <laughs> but um it's important to have that you know and if you notice that someone's being fake or inauthentic, you don't have to associate with them. Don't talk to them. Don't follow them. Don't look at what they're doing. You know what I mean? So that's just my two cents. Um, but I do feel like spirituality or, or, or new age or whatever you want to call it, I feel like even like the witchy community is growing. It's growing. <clears throat> I think it's great that it's growing because I feel like it's like, You'll have more access to more people and people are going to feel comfortable to come out of their little broom closets. Um, but expect when things get bigger to have more inauthenticity. And um, that's where it sucks. But gauge your friends with your intuition. And just because someone is inauthentic but they're in your community doesn't mean you have to like them and it doesn't mean that you have to associate with them and it doesn't mean you have to follow them so I hope I answered the questions correctly or well there is no right or wrong way to answer I guess <laughs> but I hope I answered you guys' questions and thank you guys for tuning in it's 40 minutes in and I guess I will go upload this before I take off for work 
Um, if you guys have questions in comments, whatever, complaints, please list them below. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, loves.